I am Falilu Emel Janko and as the Gambia celebrates its independence anniversary, GRTS Radio visits Alhaji Kalilu Fodeba Singate, born in Badibusaba in 1934. Mr. Singate was first elected into parliament in 1962 and was also a member of the Gambian delegation that travelled to Marlboro House in London in 1964 for the Constitutional Conference. Today, I am in his house at 56 New Pacific Street in Banjul to talk to him about Gambia's independence with special focus on the Marlboro meeting. I started the interview by asking him what he perceives as independence. Uh, it is a day that we should celebrate in our opinion because uh, let's put things in uh, into perspective because uh, Gambia was you know was divided into two colonies uh, and then we had the protectorate and also Banjul and its uh, environs. All activities, political, social, economic, were concentrated in the capital area, mm-hmm. whereas uh, the protectorate was completely marginalized. They were not even uh, considered when it comes to social activities, when it comes to political activities, when it comes to economic activities. Mm-hmm. And for this led to the creation of a, a political party called PBP mm-hmm. in our attempt to uh, to deal with that uh, maladministration, which you felt, mm-hmm. and uh, the administrative system that was uh, imposed on the protected people, they were completely uh, marginalized and uh, they were not ac- active at all in any in in any of those functions. So in 1956, we had a, a PPA that was a People's Protective Society. It was, and then later, which other was invited to the meeting. Uh, he felt that uh, the the aims and, obje- uh, and aspirations of the people at that time is uh, conceived to be created as a political party. So in 1960, it was uh, in 1959 May, we created a party called People's Progressive Party. So when that was done, uh, he in fact agitated that uh, we should have uh, universal adult survey to allow the protectorate also have CC in the election of their leaders. We had the first election in 1960. Uh, we, well, we didn't have majority, but uh, the chiefs believed that uh, they should support Peace in Jai as a chief minister. So when, he, when they uh, supported uh, uh, chief minister, chief, yeah, chief minister, uh, the leader, Omar Mbaki, was appointed minister. Then Andrew Kamara, independent, was also appointed a Minister of Health. And then Michael Balde, in 1960, was appointed Minister of Agriculture. So we felt that it was uh, not proper, so we cried foul mm-hmm. and agitated that uh, we should go further you know, into the whole system because we had majority at the time. Mm-hmm. At that point, the colonial people were also planning to revise the constitution of the Gambia. It was an opportunity for us to participate. Then in 1961, we were invited to a uh, constitutional conference in Lancaster House in London. We came with a new uh, constitution and set out brought the blueprint mm-hmm. for independence now. Mm-hmm. Then in 1962, we had a general election. Mm-hmm. We became very, because we won uh, two thirds of the uh, seats in, in the House of Representatives, so he became Prime Minister. Uh, we continued until 1960, uh, give it, you know, independence. Mm-hmm. At that time, we also tried uh, to, because we appointed, we, we, although we had a, a majority in parliament, but we decided to stay as uh, independent, but within the Commonwealth. So Sir John Paul, who was the Governor General, decided to leave, and then we appointed a Gambian uh, Governor General for the first time, Sir Ferry Mensingat. Then we tried a, a referendum. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, we did not uh, have the required majority. Mm-hmm. We were shot by, by 725 votes. Mm-hmm. The party militants agitated that uh, we should really go for independent uh, uh, republic. Mm-hmm. Uh, meeting in Farabanda with uh, the chief uh, and also the party members to, pre- to prevail over the members to understand Sir Douglas' viewpoint. Because he wanted to leave the party if uh, he insisted that we should force him to become uh, uh, a president. 
So that never worked out. So the party decided to allow him to continue until 1970. And in the 70s, we had another referendum. This time we had Twitter majority, so it uh, became clear that uh, Sarah was appointed the uh, uh, president of the republic. Um, I'm, I'm sure you had uh, aims and objectives um, with regards to um, uh, uh, achieving the independence. We are 56 years now. I don't know if uh, these objectives have been achieved along the way. Because we had a lot of problems there. In the first place, uh, I think the first, the first agenda, uh, the first item on the agenda was uh, uh, the relations with Senegal. At that, that time, Senegal had uh, seven regions, six regions, and uh, the president at the time was uh, Senghor, who insisted that Gambia's uh, independence should be linked with, uh, with, with Senegalese uh, uh, co cooperation. Uh, so they proposed to, uh, for integration with Senegal at independence, which the Senate did not accept because of uh, the colonial background, language difference, although historically we are the same people. So we dropped that, uh, came the second suggestion of having a confederal system in which the president will provide, the Chinese government will provide a presidency and Gambia will take a vice presidency. That also did not work, we could, two administrative systems are not the same, it's so likely to work. Sarah did not accept that, so it also, also dropped. So the third one which we accepted was the uh, Anton Cordial, that is uh, a cordial understanding between the states, not to allow hostile forces to enter into our country mm -hmm. against the vision of Senegal or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So we felt that was a good thing because uh, Senegal and Gambia, they are already divided by colonialists and land boundaries, but historical and cultural are the same people. That's right. So that's working normally. Right. It is often said that the Gambia attained its independence on a silver platter. There was little or no struggle. Um, uh, what happened in, like what happened in the French or Portuguese colonies? What is your opinion about this? Uh, I didn't get that word. Like it is said, it is often said by people that the Gambia attained uh, her independence on a silver platter. There was little or no struggle. Um, uh, like what happened in French or Portuguese colonies. What is your opinion about this? I don't agree with that. I don't agree. Because the situation in the country was not the same as now. Things were extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the, at the time we uh, proposed independence, there were no roads in the country. And we had only 35 private schools which were located in the chiefs' uh, villages. Mm -hmm. We had only two high schools. That's, uh, Amity School and one or two schools around by Boisa School and Santa Costa, about three or so. Mm -hmm. And the hospitals were only two uh, Bansan Hospital and uh, RVH. Mm -hmm. So there was nothing actually, things were completely different. So it was a big struggle and fight for us mm -hmm. to. That was why a lot of people felt that we might not uh, be able to uh, uh, have I independence and uh, and then preserve it. No, so it was uh, not to, not true that uh, we had it easily offered to us. And uh, there was a lot of agitation because a lot of people, just some people had uh, mm -hmm. an opinion that uh, they were not very keen about independence. Mm -hmm. you know, they felt that uh, a country that is not able to make a box of match or if it, uh, a needle cannot live by itself to do anything. This is just um, simply not true. Uh, take us through the Marlboro Conference, you know, what is your, um, your opinion with regards to the importance of the meeting? You talked about uh, the issues discussed at the meeting earlier on, but then we would like to hear from you um, how important was this meeting for the Gambia? Uh, there were no hurdles. The only problem we had at the time was just the timing of uh, the, uh, the independence and also our relation with Senegal was uh, the main major things that uh, we discussed really. And uh, we, we can assume that it, we can we can uh, clearly say that it was a very important meeting because that was that was what led to our independence. Exactly. Um, now uh, let's talk about uh, the meeting itself. Like, did the Gambia went to the meeting with one voice, or you had uh, descending views? Uh, yes, we had uh, divergence of opinion on many subjects because uh, if the uh, 
the older political parties were able to handle the situation properly in the protectorate. Mm -hmm. There would not have been need for Oros to for BP to come in. Mm -hmm. But we felt that uh, the ideas were not met and they have been not, 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 they have not been looked after in the way that we felt was the right thing to do. As I said earlier, they were not even considered for anything to do with social or economic or political uh, questions. Mm -hmm. So we felt that uh, we should uh, really come up to defend our own people and uh, give them uh, necessary support. So in fact, some of them were with that idea that uh, independence was too early, we should delay it. But nevertheless, we were able to overcome the position and they became with a, a stronger voice to, for independence. So, so, so it happened. This divergent views after independence, does it affect anything in governing the country, for instance? Yeah, after after the conference, we had, we had um, a coalition of the political parties, which made things very easy for us because we were able to win seats in Banyul. Because Sadar himself was a champion of democracy and uh, he fought relentlessly, relentlessly against uh, uh, the tribalism, for example, and sectionalism. He never liked that. He fought against that all the way through. That was why the elections we had earlier on in 60 and 62, uh, he was uh, sponsored as a PVP candidate in Birkama, although he was born in Nyani. But, uh, and Baby Nyani, he was from Banyul, also was sent to Sukuta. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had also Amankanye, who was uh, from Jara, who was sent to Kiawes, and so forth. So Sarada was against uh, tribalism, he was against sectionalism, mm -hmm. and he, d he did prove this uh, all along. Mm -hmm. So the people that we, we felt were not uh, supporting us, we are persuaded to follow our viewpoint, and uh, we had a very strong coalition which really helped us. Mm -hmm. In fact, the first cabinet was, uh, independence cabinet was, uh, <laughs> majority of we are from uh, people outside our party, right. uh, just to make them comfortable, and. Uh, uh, and work as a team. So. Is, uh, th th this uh, information of independence, um, uh, you you were present when everything happened. I mean, how was how was it received by the masses? The masses, uh, uh, very, very, they were very jubilant. In fact, we, uh, when it was announced that uh, we'll have independence, 18 February, and then the Queen's representative will be coming. Mm -hmm. Well, we sent a team to the provinces to tell them what to do and they came in their right numbers to support mm -hmm. the party, to support the celebrations. Mm -hmm. uh, it must have been very young, it was a very busy day for us in Bangalore in those days. But it was very, it was well, it was well taken by the people of this country. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, our next question will be like, uh, normally when 18 February comes every year, um, what exactly does it remind you about the day? Uh, what, what moment does it take your mind to? M myself? Yes. We, we have to, uh, well, a, a lot indeed, because uh, uh, it was a very, very big uh, issue for us, you know, and uh, we all took part, we participated very effectively, and it gave us the sense of unity and achievement for our country. So the big, biggest legacy was that out there, really. Thanks. Sure. Um, um, a piece of advice to the younger generation will be very important with regards to patriotism, um, uh, nationalism, etc. What is happening in our political field is not what uh, we envisage, as a matter of fact. Because uh, they were, instead of uh, discussing policies and issues and convincing people to support them, they tend to uh, patronize uh, uh, the, 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 their criticism or insulting using abusive language, using a, uh, uh, they castigate each other, they uh, will call people's name on their parents. This is not what we actually thought would ha ever happen to this country. We never thought that. So the, what they are doing is not so what we perceive, and it's not really in, our, in the country's interest for them to behave that way. I think uh, there are many political parties which in the first place may be necessary or necessary, I don't know. But uh, the, the important thing for them, if they cannot come together, they should really discuss issues, their policies, rather than attacking individual politicians. They has nothing to do with politics. 
Yes, we didn't do anything like that in the PPP. In fact, uh, we are almost cousins. Uh, we, 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 we talk politics, as uh, well, it's it, 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 it of necessity, but uh, to insult people, we didn't do it like that. We didn't do it like that. It's like freedom of speech, the democracy that you guys fought for. Our generation is kind of abusing it. Yes, we had that. Yeah, we have freedom of speech, freedom of association, and uh, this should not, never curtail at all. And uh, we did not uh, limit anybody or constrain them from participation in the other political parties. And all along, we believe that the people should have their individual freedom mm -hmm. and uh, we have respect for human values, you see, and so forth. Right. So we want to thank you very much for granting us this interview. We will have the Monday version in just a while. But for now, we want to thank you very much for um, accepting us and receiving us at your home here. You know what I'm saying? At our number 56 Perseverance Street in Banjul. Um, uh, we thank you very much. If you have any final note for our beautiful listeners that uh, that are listening to this independent special program, 2021 on GRTS Radio. Well, well, thank you very much uh, for coming to talk to me. Uh, it is my pleasure to talk to you, and I think uh, the young people should learn a lot from us because they need more patience than uh, than we had. What was a problem uh, in the old days? Not a problem now. What was a uh, Ogen at the time is still Ogen now. now. So things are much better now. They should be able to come together and to develop our country. Thank you very much for coming once again. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alhaji Khalilu Singate. Listeners, you've heard him. He was one of uh, the delegates that went to uh, Marlboro Conference to seek for Gambia's independence. And it's very important to come to his house and uh, have this conversation with him because the Gambia is celebrating 56 years of nationhood. That is 18 February, year 2021. I am Falilu Emel Jango. Special thanks to Amadou Jata for taking care of studio operations. And a special thanks to...